Hi everyone, it's Jessica with Nooks and Bloom. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a really fun transformation on this accent wall in our kitchen. If you recall, I have put peel and stick wallpaper up and it has been beautiful. I have really enjoyed it, but I get itchy for a new look and I've also been inspired by my friend Chelsea from Montero Manor. She does some amazing faux effects using paint and other products you should follow her account on Instagram. She's really talented. I am going to try to follow her lead and do a wall using salt wash and paint, maybe some other techniques to create a stone kind of exposed brick without the brick, just kind of a European vintage old rustic stone wall without it being stone. So stay with me. I'm going to take down this wallpaper and the shelving and get started. I'll be right back. Hi everyone, I'm back and I have now stripped the wall of the wallpaper. It was very easy to take down peel and stick wallpaper and I've taken my shelving down and I'm ready to start painting. So as you can see, the wallpaper pulled out some, pulled off some of the paint, but I'm going to work with that because I think that'll be a really cool texture. So what I'm going to start with are my undertones because to create this exposed brick or stone wall, you're going to need layers. So I am going to do that with some paint colors. I'm going to start an experiment with two colors. First, I have this very rich, pretty gray, which is called Antique Tin by Bear. And then I have mixed two colors, a uh, red and a brown. Chocolate Squirrel is, sorry, not squirrel, swirl. Chocolate Swirl is the brown and Cherry Cola is the red. I'm trying not to mix it too much to not make it too purple, but to see what happens when I put it on the wall. Here we have the salt wash. The salt wash, this is my first time trying it, but I have seen some colleagues do it and it just works amazing. So as you can see, it's like a powdery consistency and it kind of feels like talcum powder a little bit. And it's um, a pretty big jar. I think this will be enough for my accent wall. So what I'm going to do is take a Dixie cup and I'm going to start mixing. This is about maybe half a cup of paint. I'm going to just estimate close to half a cup and I'm going to mix this together. Okay guys, this is coming together nicely. It's kind of looking like a thick pancake batter or cake batter, which I understand that's how you're supposed to get it. Okay. Now we're going to make the application on the wall just sporadic and blotchy. It's not going to look pretty, but it's going to have a purpose and an end game. So I take my paintbrush. Oh, and this is chalk paint and I'll put a link in my video description of how I convert latex paint to chalk paint. You don't need chalk paint for this product, but since I already had chalk paint, that's what I'm using. So basically, I'm going to start dabbing my paintbrush on. And it's the point is to leave these peaks, these high peaks, and it really looks textured. I, again, am doing it sporadically because this is going to be an undertone. I still want some of the white to be exposed and just everything be really blotchy. We are creating something distressed, something antique, kind of those old walls with exposed aged colors that you see in European homes. So I'm going to continue doing this all around the accent wall. So now that I have my gray on, as I told you, it's going to look really messy, really choppy, but it will come together. Now I'm going to do the next color, 
which is kind of like a reddish brown. I'm only using a little bit, so I'm going to put just a little bit of the salt wash in it and mix it up. Okay, I'm only going to use a little bit of this. I don't need as much as the gray. It's not going to be such a pronounced undertone. It's going to be just highlights. So I get my brush and I start dabbing away. Hey everyone, we're back and I have finished letting this wall dry with the two undercoats. It has taken a little bit to dry, a little over three hours. I think because you apply this mixture so thickly that it does, you do have to give it some dry time. But I wanna show you something that I learned in my application. This is why we're always working with trial and error. With this salt wash that I mix into my paint, on a vertical wall, it will start to drip as you can see like right there and other parts where it just kind of sagged and did not stay in a peak form. So basically I think that that has to do with the consistency. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to sand and see what this does because I don't know if I have enough peaks for it to come off but I'm going to give it a try. And if not, that's okay. It'll still be kind of a textured underlayer, which is what we want. So let's give this a try. I do think this is going to be messy with sanding debris everywhere, but that's okay. That's part of the fun of getting your hands dirty. So what I have here is 120 grit sandpaper. It's pretty high grit to just try to see if it will knock off some of this um, top layer of paint. Okay, so this is working. I wanna show you what happens here. So you see the white exposed in these little dots. That's what we want to see because that makes it look aged and distressed. Of course, it's not looking glamorous right now, but we want the paint structure to kind of deteriorate. We're going to be doing this on the whole wall, all these blotches, and then I'll come back and start applying my final layer of paint. Okay guys, so this looks pretty cool as far as this product really just opening up those blotches of paint to expose the white underneath. That means that we can create the same look on the top coat, but instead of exposing the white, it's going to expose the under colors, which is what we want. It's going to expose them very, very minimally, but that is going to create the stone wall look. So what I've done now is make my batch of this off-white color. It's called Meaning House White by Glidden. And it's the color we have in our kitchen originally, but I am going to use it as my top coat to um, create this look. However, I have made it a lot thicker than the first batch. I added a lot more of the salt wash and just look at this gooey yumminess. I mean, it pretty much holds on there and I think that will work a lot better. Look at this stir stick, it almost just sits in there. So I think that this is going to work much better. So I'm gonna start applying it and let me show you what the results will be with this consistency. So again, we take our paintbrush. The trick is I'm not going to cover everything completely. I am gonna leave some of the color underneath, but very minimally. So take a look at these peaks. That's what you want to see. You want to see those peaks nice and hard and that is going to make it look later like just aged European stone. See that's pretty cool. Later we'll just knock off those peaks a little bit 
but I actually like them too. I might leave some. So I'm going to do this on the entire wall. Just going to continue to apply. And I'm just, I'm going to play with this technique. So, oops, I just covered a hole, a screw hole for the shelves. So this is the part that's going to be a little bit time consuming, but it's all going to be worth it. I actually enjoy this part of the process because it lets me really put together a look that's unique, that's artistic, and that's going to really add a beautiful aesthetic to the home. As you can see, I'm leaving some of this gray underneath. I'm trying to raise the level of this white by just making it, applying it really thickly and I'm leaving some of the red. So just play with whatever look you want. If you want more of your undertones exposed, your undercolors, then you don't paint as much over them. But if you want just more of a subtle look, remember that when you sand it, after we paint, we're going to sand and it's going to show, reveal a lot of those colors still. But this is really looking beautiful. I really like, this product. So I think it's going to turn out nicely once I get it all done. Okay, so I'm noticing that this is sagging a little bit because I applied it on really thick so I can just take my brush and just kind of hit it a little bit as it dries. Okay guys, so I'll be back soon to share the results of this entire second layer. Hey everyone, I am back and I have finished sanding the whole wall. I'm going to show you how it came out. I really love it. It really looks authentic. Take a look. I love all the texture and all the undertones. It's looking pretty much like a stone wall. I opened up a lot of the under colors with the sander, so it exposed it here. And then I kept a lot of the elevation from the salt wash. I am going to go around and lighten just a little bit. Just even things out a little bit with my paint. You don't have to do that for this look. This look is already pretty amazing. But um, I prefer to just for my choice. So that's it. Mm -hmm.